good morning. Um, Cinco de Mayo today. You know what Cinco de Mayo is? It's May 5th. And uh, I don't know if it's anything other than that, but I'm glad to have a few minutes with you today. And God has been so good to us. And uh, today I was thinking about a man named James Ireland. And it being May 5th, I tell a little story on this day in Baptist history. tells a little bit about James Ireland and some of the things that he faced. And uh, he was a pretty unknown man uh, for the most part. But uh, he, he grew up in, um, in uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. And he was uh, a Presbyterian. But under great conviction, he ended up getting saved. Uh, joining the Baptist Church, helping organize Baptist churches, and um, he's just a very, very loved man. I'll read you just a couple of things about him. Um, there was a um, a church bell with the inscription to the memory of James Ireland, and then it had his death, birth, and death dates. Um, the intention of the Culpeper Baptist Church in Culpeper, Virginia, where James Ireland had been imprisoned, was so that imagination. When the bell was rung, we may hear James Ireland calling us forth. This little-known James Ireland, um, after this difficult growing up and resisting God, he was a school teacher, and yet God was working on his heart all through those times. After a long time of conviction, he got saved and became a fearless and courageous proclaimer of this message of the gospel. On one occasion, again, Virginia was very hard on, on the, the Baptists and the Quakers as well, especially Baptists, because the Baptists were so evangelistic. Quakers were different, but they weren't as evangelistic. Um, but he was seized by the collar by two men, given the ultimatum of promising not to preach any longer or go to jail. He chose the latter alternative, and after a few days, he was incarcerated in Culpeper. Through the jail bars, he preached in spite of all the efforts to disturb him and his listeners. His detractors would ride horses at a gallop right through the middle of the audience. They attempted to blow up his cell with gunpowder. They tried to suffocate him by burning brimstone and Indian pepper under the floor of his cell. A doctor and the jailer conspired to poison him. Ireland was also dunked in water and threatened with public whippings when uh, drunken rowdies were placed in his cell to harass him. He led them to Christ. There's a great story or two. I won't take time there. But one of those men ended up being not only his bodyguard, but also a preacher uh, that was put in the cell to beat him up. And uh, so, um, but he wrote letters to people, uh, his church and to individuals. And he, he always headed the letters up from my palace in Culpeper. And he looked at that cell, if this is the will of God, then it's the place I need to be and it's my palace. And he said, in which uh, my prison then was a place which I enjoyed much divine presence. A day seldom passed without some signal, signal token of the manifestation of divine goodness toward me. Even while he preached out of prison, he continued to be threatened with beatings and dunkings. On one occasion, two women conspired to poison his family, and which nearly resulted in Ireland's own death and did cause the death of one of his eight children. He bore the burden of ill health as a result of his mistreatment and died on May 5th, 1806. And just a story of, of a good man who decided that the gospel needed to be preached and whatever people thought didn't matter. And uh, a reminder, too, that um, there are people who are the enemy of the gospel, many times religious people. Don't be surprised when so-called reputable people um, attack the, the gospel testimony and, and to try to hurt the church. That Don't let it bother you. It would bother us. Of course it would. But around the world, there are people, governments, we've watched it over the centuries, and we're seeing a rising of evil in America like never before. And it's brazen, it's bold and outspoken. And, uh, and, and we, we got to commit it to God, not fret about it, just do our job. And be grateful for what we've had. Uh, I was thinking uh, somebody sent me a copy of a written sermon of a man named um, Sam Gipp. And one of the things he said in the midst of any difficulties, let's remember how many ice creams have we had? How many steak dinners have we had? How many beautiful cars have we owned? Uh, how many, and he went on and on. How good has life been? And uh, Job said, what shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord and not evil also? You think we, we never have a difficulty here. We're in this troubled world. And and a world filled with evil, and, and none of it's going to land on us. 
the unsaved have evil and difficulties. And uh, so we've got not only the evil of just the world, we've got the evil of the devil who hates the gospel and hates those who would witness. And if we as a church stand for the old time faith, and if we stand for the Bible and conviction about soul winning and preaching and you must be born again, and, and if uh, the devil keeps seeing our young people going off uh, into the ministry, uh, he's going to fight us every way possible. And I want to think of people going to the ministry, I want to encourage you to uh, be praying. Nate and Mar um, um, Marissa Patton uh, married about a year ago, have a little baby, and they're starting their deputation back east, and we'll, I'm sure we'll have them out at our church at some point. Uh, our son Josiah, he and Ruth Ann are uh, setting up now to go to uh, candidate school to work with a mission board for a week, uh, just training things and instructional things about to go into another country. There's a lot to learn. And probably a week isn't even the beginning of what they need, but uh, they're going to be going there in June, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, then hopefully in fall be able to start visiting churches and going on deputation. And we've got others uh, in just a couple of weeks. Um, um, Caleb Patton's getting married and graduating from college, getting married, and he's already got a position as an assistant pastor at a church in the East, and, and I'm so proud of our young people and their faithfulness, and it's a great thing. Adam uh, Servine's graduating in uh, a week from Friday, and uh, Adam has already got a position as an assistant principal, an assistant pastor, I think in Michigan, and uh, what, a, what a neat thing to see our young, pe young people turn out for God now. If our young people keep turning out for God and our young people keep wanting to serve God, you can assume the devil's mad. And uh, all across America, any churches that are trying to go soul winning and get the gospel out, they're going to be attacked. And so don't, uh, like with James Ireland, um, look, we win. Just love God and love people and be good to people. And yeah, people are, people are a mess. And people are hurt. Uh, uh, this whole world is rough on people and the devil like a festering splinter. You ever get a splinter from redwood, it festers quicker and worse than, than most any other kind of wood. And um, and that's the devil gets a little hurt and he'll get that thing to and to fester in there, make it worse and worse and get us so sensitive. And um, and it's, uh, look, we, we we as the people of God need to, let our, uh, the last two days I've talked about when you don't know what to do, you just do what's right. And let the chips fall wherever they fall and love God and love people. And, and uh, if they crucify you like they did Jesus and Peter and others, then that's on them. That's not on us. Our job is to love and to forgive and invest our lives in others. I want to mention the two little words, even as, even as, and uh, just a few quick verses today. Uh, because thinking about this, you want to look over to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. And again, I'm, uh, I'm at home here in a quiet spot. I've got the grandkids with us this week as our son. Josh and he's our youth director and our and his wife are of our senior class in Florida if you think to pray for them and uh, yesterday they were on a airboat and they got to see alligators that was one of the things I wanted to see when I was in Florida I said I want to see an alligator not too close but a little bit and they were on an airboat going over land and water and a dozen of them I think it is and they were all in one big boat and they had a great time did some things but um, but pray for them but anyway so we've got the grandkids so the house is a little busier than normal. But uh, if you look with me at Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter, I'm sorry, Ephesians, yeah, Ephesians 4 and verse 32, talking about even as. Ephesians 4, 32, be a kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, and there's that even as, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Even as I'm to forgive you like God forgave me. Now, God didn't forgive me because I'm so good. God forgave me for Christ's sake, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave me. And so I'm to forgive you in the same way, for Christ's sake. I don't forgive someone who hurts me because they didn't hurt me. Of course they hurt me. And I don't like it, and I don't want them to do it again. But because of Jesus Christ, because of his death on the cross, I will forgive, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave me. And so look at that verse again. Be, be a kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So it's for Christ's sake God forgives us, and it's for Christ's sake we are to forgive others. 
And so this thing of even as. Now, if you look over to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and uh, let me see if I've got the right, the right verse written down here. Colossians 3 and verse 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, oh, I like that. If any man, that's pretty open, any man, have a quarrel against any. So if anyone has a quarrel against anyone, the end of verse 13, even as, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. That's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. This thing about bearing grudges and vengeance and and all that, you know, we all know vengeance is mine. I'll repay, saith the Lord. We, we don't like it, and we don't practice it, but we're supposed to. Even as if any man have a quarrel against any man. Now, I don't know what people do with those verses that say they're Christians, and they're bitter and anger and vengeful, and I have sat with people that that the, you could just see the bitterness stewing in their heart, and and, uh, you know, I, I just grieve in my heart for them because that doesn't leave. Uh, that's like cooking broccoli and cauliflower in your kitchen. The stink is forever in there until you cook bacon and pancakes. That might help it out. But, you know, uh, I don't mind broccoli and cauliflower, but cook it outside. And uh, one of our friends years ago, a good couple in our church, he was Korean and she was from the New England state somewhere. And uh, she said, I'll cook anything he wants. But when I cook Korean food, I cook outside and I carry it in because I'm not cooking that stuff in my kitchen. And, uh, but even as, even as if any man have a quarrel against any, forgive, forgive. And it's in the Bible. A lot of verses in Colossians and Ephesians line up. I think those two churches might have had some similar difficulties. Paul worked with them. Now go back over to Ephesians again where we were a minute ago and look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, and here's another even as in the Bible. And again, these even as, you, sometimes you can catch a little phrase. It'll teach you all kinds of things, give you a, a springboard to find Scripture and, and truth. But look at Ephesians 5, 33. Now, most of Ephesians 5 is about marriage. But the end of Ephesians 5, look at verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife. So men... So love your wife, even as himself. Even as himself. Now, you know how much we love ourselves, men. We love ourselves, and we are to love our wife as even as we love ourselves. That's a lot of love. And uh, so an even as we're to forgive, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave us, and we're to love our wives, even as we love ourselves and you can go back earlier in uh, in Ephesians 5, uh, 5 a little bit and look at verse 25 Ephesians 5:25 husbands love your wives even as Christ loved the church and so there's another even as love your wife as yourself and then love your wife as Christ loved the church and so those are even as so you need to compare it he says, here's one and here's the other. And you make sure they line up. You look at how much you love yourself and make sure your love for your wife matches. You look at how much Christ loves the church enough to die for it. You, you love your wife with that kind of even as love. There's a lot of them, but let me show you. Uh, go over to 1 John. I'll show you two more real quick. 1 John chapter two, uh, 1. Uh, two, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. It's almost to the book of Revelation. 1 John chapter 2, and, um, and look at verse 6. I'll give you a minute. You see, this um, mankind likes to justify his corruption. And we say, well, yeah, God wants us to forgive, except in certain circumstances. No, you forgive even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave you. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to love your wife, but you know what? If she's had a guy in my office one day... And he'd had a, he had a rough go of it with his wife, I must admit. Um, he, had, he had a battle. And he said, Preacher, how much am I supposed to take? And I said, you have to decide. But I said, I think in the scripture, and I held my hand up, I said, until there's nail prints in your hand. 
<laughs> he just hung his head, and uh, he was wanting an, he was wanting another answer, and I don't know if I could take what he took. Yeah, he was a good man, and he took a lot, and I admire him. Admired him at the time. I admire him still, and uh, but that even as love. And we're to love our wife even as we love ourselves. We're to love our wife even as Christ loved the church. There's no excuses. Don't don't make any any sloppy. Uh, well, it's different for me. He didn't see when he starts doing even as love. He's making it clear what he wants. Now, if you look over there at First John chapter two, you thought I forgot where I was. Down at verse six, he that saith he abideth in him. If we say we abide in Christ, we're a Christian, we're walking with God, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Even as he walked. If I'm a child of God, if I'm abiding in Christ, I should be walking even as Jesus walked. Now that's a, that's a high bar to, to, to keep up to. But even as even as Christ walked, how did he walk in this world? How did he live? How did he uh, treat people? And he was harder on religious people than he was on the common man. And um, he was a, a, a lived holy and did right. And, and, and when people mistreated him, he took it. Uh, he took the beating. He took the ugly words. Uh, what a savior we have. And, um, if you abide in him, he said, you're to walk even as Christ walked. And we're to forgive as Christ forgave. We're to love as we love ourselves. We're to love as we love as Christ loved the church. And now we're to walk even as Christ walked. I'll show you one more. Look at chapter 3, uh, 1 John 3, and down at verse 3. Every man, 1 John 3, 3, every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Now there's a there's a lot more even as this is the last, this is five is the last one I'll show you this morning. But it, it, it's um, I can um, every man that hath this hope. The, what is the hope? If you look in context, the hope is that Christ coming again. The hope that you're going to see Jesus one day. Hey, you know the people who uh, are ugly and cuss their spouse and bitter and all that. How are they going to face Christ when He comes back? The people whose hearts filled with unforgiveness and bitterness and vindictiveness how are they gonna face Christ when he returns and uh, so he says here in first John 3 3 if you have that hope of Christ's return then then you he says he makes it very clear he says hey every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure we are to so it's a process it's a continuing a day in day out purify himself as he is pure I am to live a pure life and for these last 39 years here at this church and 45 years as a Christian, uh, I've not been perfect at this thing, but oh, I labor for purity. Purity inside. That's the, the outside. When It's funny. People are wrestling with a cigarette or a beer. I think, well, keep fighting. Hang in there. But I'm thinking to myself, wait till you start wrestling with that old selfish heart. Wait till you start wrestling with greed or covetousness or envy or jealousy. Man, a cigarette's nothing compared to the inside things. Uh, to, to be clean outwardly is not a difficult battle. And it is, I understand it is a difficult battle for some. Um, I, I remember Joe Boyd, famous evangelist, and he's been dead for many years now, but Joe Boyd told me, he said, uh, and, and I didn't meet him until he was in his late 60s, I guess, and... Um, he, he, quit, he got saved when he was 27, if I remember right, mid, late 20s, early, mid to late 20s. I think he was 27. He said, I got saved. He said, I smoked all the way up till then. When I got saved, I dropped those cigarettes just like that. And he said, but for, I forget, 20, 30 years afterwards, he said, I could walk by a smoker who was smoking a cigarette. He said, my mouth would water. He said, man, I wanted a cigarette. And I thought, whoa, I can't even imagine that. To me, it's... You know, now I've got some memories. My dad, he left when I was 10, and I still can smell pipe tobacco and sense aromas to touch you. And it's that uh, that warmth of our home growing up. I had a happy home. And uh, we weren't in church, but we had a happy home. I never heard my parents fight. My brother and I fought, but brothers are supposed to fight. And uh, But our home was a good home and a happy home. And, and even with a divorce, it wasn't, to us kids, wasn't ugly. And uh, 
but the, the warmth that was there, well, uh, we're to purify himself even as he is pure. So um, we're to work at this, it's get clean. And then a little bit of the dirt of the world creeps into your mind and you get clean. And, and some, boy, it, it is a constant. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. And all of us work at living a Christ-like life. Living a life that we would bring no reproach to the name of Jesus, that wonderful Savior we have. And uh, the world may be ugly, but it was ugly to him. I remember James Ireland, we just read about. The world was ugly to him. There's stories that went on about James Ireland. I didn't read. There's a lot of stories. This man was a great preacher and a, and a, a fearless, beat him, drown, nearly drowned him. You know, he's they because they they're Anglicans, they're Church of England, they're... He's dipping their their uh, converts, and so they're and so they're t holding him underwater, and, and oh, they were vicious to him, and he just loved God and preached the gospel, and and uh, what a testimony he left behind, you know, no bitter, unforgiving, dirty, no no one ever leaves a reputation because they could drink more beer than anybody else, or they could smoke more pot, or they were more ugly or vicious or foul, or, oh, but the testimony of of godly, loving, caring people. That is the testimony we ought to all want. And just to make a difference, and let's let's practice some even as in our life today. And hey, I hope you can come to church tonight, uh, Wednesday night, our Bible study. And uh, don't forget, if you want to come, 6 o'clock to 6.45, I've got a marriage class. And just work on our marriages. The old devil's after our marriages every chance he gets. And then we'll have our Bible study at 7.00. And of course, Mother's Day. Let's do something for our moms and care about them. You have a great day. Thank you for joining us for a few minutes this morning.